Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Dallas, and today's lesson I'm going to do a, uh, a video on properties of rectangles. Um, but before I do properties of rectangles, I want to discuss what the definition of a rectangle is. A rectangle is a quadrilateral that has four right angles. So a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon, and every angle in a rectangle is 90 degrees. So uh, every single rectangle, no matter what, every angle is 90 degrees. That's something that's going to be useful and help you on problems later on. Now let's talk about the properties of a rectangle. First of all, a rectangle, um, this is my uh, quadrilateral flow chart. I've got a video on this. Uh, a rectangle is a type of a quadrilateral. Um, so a rectangle has all the characteristics. If you follow these arrows up, a rectangle has, a, has the characteristics of, of a polygon, a quadrilateral, and a parallelogram. But a, a rectangle is a special kind of parallelogram. Um, so a, a rectangle has these two characteristics down here plus these seven characteristics right here plus these two characteristics right here and then these, this one characteristic. And so if you add these up, a rectangle has all kinds of little qualities and properties that you need to know about. But for my students, I am telling my students they mainly need to know that a rectangle has all of these characteristics. So a rectangle is a special type of parallelogram. Um, so these seven plus these two, I'm going to focus on these nine characteristics today. And these nine characteristics are what make a, a rectangle a rectangle instead of it being a rhombus or a kite or a trapezoid. So moving on right here. Uh, I've got the nine properties that I mentioned on the previous page. Um, seven of these properties come from parallelograms, and I covered all seven of these in a video I did on parallelograms. So if you want to watch that, you can. So a rectangle um, has opposite sides are parallel. So opposite sides are parallel. Also a rectangle has opposite sides are congruent. So opposite ends are, are equal length. Um, opposite angles are congruent. Again, these are all 90 degree angles, so opposite angles are congruent to each other. And then if you take this 90 angle and this 90 angle and you add them together, you get 180 degrees. And that's the, the case all the way around. All these angles on a rectangle are always going to equal 180 degrees. But I'm going to backtrack from that. Um, also, the diagonals bisect each other. If I connected D to B and A to C, the diagonals cut each other into two equal parts. And then it also has one pair of sides that are congruent and parallel. And then, um, so let's say this guy was parallel and this one was parallel, then these sides would also be congruent to each other, or vice versa. And then the last one here says each diagonal divides the quadrilateral into two congruent triangles. So if I connected A to C, so if I were to connect A all the way down to C here, this triangle is the same as this one. If I just rotated this triangle around, I would get two identical triangles. But again, I'm kind of paraphrasing this right here because I did a video on this, and you can watch it over parallelograms. Uh, but right now, I'm going to spend a little bit more time covering the eighth and the ninth uh, property, which are all angles or right angles, and then the, the diagonals are congruent. So I'm going to move on here. It says all angles are right angles. So we know every single one of these angles are 90 degrees. That's important, and that's, I think, fairly simple to understand. Uh, but I'm going to go a step further here. I know that 4 angles times 90 degrees equals 360 degrees. So the sum of the interior angles of a rectangle is always going to be 360 degrees. That's one characteristic of a quadrilateral. But again, for a rectangle, these are always going to be 90 degrees, no matter how big or small the rectangle is. And then the ninth, char ninth characteristic or property of a, uh, a rectangle are that the diagonals are congruent. So in other words, if I were to measure the entire length of this blue line segment, um, it would be equal to the length of this red line segment. So let's say that segment BD was, oh, I don't know, 12 inches. If this whole thing is 12 inches here, then line segment AC would also be 12 inches. So I'm going to say combined this whole thing here is 12 inches. And that's the same thing for this guy right here. I hope I do this right. I'm doing it upside down. This is also going to be 12 inches. That's, so every single time 
you talk about the diagonals of a rectangle, those diagonals are going to always be equal to each other. And a, a thing I'm going to go a little further here is um, the diagonals also bisect each other. So these are, if I chop these in half, this line segment here would be 6, and so would this one. So if this is 6, this is 6, but this will be 6, and this will be 6 as well. Again, these are equal in length, but when they bisect each other, they cut each other in half. So this 12 divided by 2 is also a, a 6. So 6 and 6 here, 6 and 6 here. So if you know one of these little segments, um, you know every single one of these segments as well. I just happen to use 12. This could have been 10, so this would have been 10, 10, and 10, or any other kind of combination. So I've got a couple um, um, problems that I want to discuss with you here. Um, I'm going to do a couple example problems, and hopefully this will help you grasp the concepts that I just talked about a little bit better. But if I look at uh, example one here, it says uh, FGHJ is a rectangle. Find the measure of the indicated angles. And I gave you this angle in the middle, and I gave you this angle in this corner. Now, let's see here. I know that these angles have to be 90 degrees. In fact, every single one of these angles is going to be 90 degrees. But I'm cutting this 90 degree angle into two parts. Well, if I were to take 90, subtract it from 27, this gives me 53. Actually, this gives me 63, sorry. So I know angle 3 is a 63 degree angle. And that's kind of useful to me because, again, I, I know these two angles now. Now let's see something else here. I'm going to go over something I talk about with my students. Um, if I chop a rectangle in half down the middle, I get something called an axis of symmetry. So an axis of symmetry is, let me see here, axis of symmetry. An axis of symmetry is, if I could, let's say, fold this rectangle in half, I would have a mirror image on the left side and the right side. So whatever happens on the right side is going to be the same thing on the left side. So if this is 27 here, this is also going to be 27 degrees here. And then if this is 63 degrees here, if I folded this over, this would also be 63 degrees. Well, a rectangle happens to have two axes, or axes, I guess you could say, plural, axes of symmetry. This is another axis of symmetry right down here. Whereas if I were to fold a rectangle uh, in the middle going horizontally, whatever happens on the bottom is a mirror image of whatever is happening on the top. So if this is 63 here, this is also 63, and then this would be 27 degrees. And then whatever is happening here would fold over, or this would fold up, however you looked at it, and this would be a 63 degree angle, and this right here would be a 27 degree angle. I'm going to remove these axes of symmetry though, get them out of the way, so I can discuss what's happening in the middle here. So let's see here. Um, my goal is to figure out what angle 4 is. There's a couple ways of doing this. First of all, I have a linear pair, so I know these combined equal 180 degrees. Or I've got a small little triangle in here where I know all three of these angles have to equal 180 degrees. Well, I'm just going to do the linear pair here. I think that's going to be easier math. So if I take 180 minus 126, that gives me a 54 degree angle. So this is 54 degrees. And vertical angle going across, this is 54 degrees. And then vertical angle up and down, this is 126 degrees. So there's a couple things here that you need to understand. Um, if you know one angle down here, you can essentially find all of these angles over here and even those angles in the middle. So again, this is a mirror image. If this is 27, this is 27, which is 27 here, which is 27 down here. And if this is 63, so is this one, which is this one and this one. And again, you know these are 90 degree angles. So if you know one of these angles, you can mathematically figure out what the other angle is. And if you have diagonals going through the middle here, again, you have small little triangles. So I've got a small triangle right here. I've got another triangle right here another triangle right here and another triangle right here where these angles have to equal 180 degrees. So just as easily I could have added these two up I would have gotten 126 take that away from 180 and I would have known that this angle here is 54 degrees. So 
There's a couple things you need to know here to hopefully understand that. Um, the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the, the side links here. So it says, uh, oops, it should say example two. It's my bad. FGHJ is a rectangle. Find the measures for the missing segments and sides. So I need to figure out what all these segments are in this rectangle. Well, we know a rectangle is a parallelogram. So we know that opposite sides here should be equal to each other. So I'm going to say this is 5 inches. If this is 12 inches here, this should be 12 inches up here. So I'm figuring this out pretty quickly. We also know that the diagonals bisect each other. That's another characteristic of a parallelogram and a rectangle. So if this is 6.5 inches here, this is going to be 6.5 inches as well. But what else do we know here? Can we figure out what this length in this segment, the length of this segment is? Absolutely we can. I know that this diagonal is the same length as this diagonal because I know that diagonals are congruent to each other. So if this is 6.5 and this is 6.5, that combines to equal, oops, let me do this a little nicer. These two would combine and equal 13 inches. So I know that this whole length here would be 13 inches. So I know, I'm having a little trouble here, I know that this right here should be 13 inches. But again, the diagonals bisect each other. So since they bisect each other, if I take 13 divided by 2, I know this is 6.5 inches, and this one is also 6.5 inches. Anyways, I hope this helps you understand um, that there are nine properties of rectangles, especially for my students to understand. And um, the main difference here between a parallelogram and a rectangle is that all these angles are 90 degree angles and, uh, in a rectangle and also that the diagonals uh, are congruent to each other. So whatever the length of the diagonal is going across here, it's the same as the length of this diagonal here. And using all that information, we can figure out what the angles are inside a rectangle and what the side lengths and segments are inside and on the perimeter of the rectangle. Anyways, I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.